This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. That's right. That's right. It is just what you need. Hello, I'm John Solberg, your host for the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. And I've got to let you know, today's episode is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop. Purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus Briskets. And as always, they are handpicked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week, they are shipping out competition quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams that use The Butcher Shop win, and they win often. If you're not a competitor, but you still have an eye for the finer cuts, great news. The Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry age, Australian Wagyu, and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of the cul-de-sac. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock. And again, always handpicked for you. You might be saying, John, all that sounds great, but what about some exotic stuff? Rest easy. The Butcher Shop can get you your next elk steak or camel roast, and they're going to ship it out promptly. Somebody give that camel a try and let me know what you think. Let's review the best competition briskets, check. The best pork selection, check. Giving you a better overall option to cook at home, check. So give the butcher shop a call today, 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. One more time, 850-458-8782. Mention the Barbecue Central Show, and they're going to give you 10% off your entire order each and every time. The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus Briskets. And today we're going to take a step way back to 2010, a little bit of Barbecue Central show history. Here we go. Yeah, I know, a little extended intro segment with actual lyrics this time, and that's because I have the lead singer and the lead guitarist of my favorite new band ever and the unofficial band of the Barbecue Central Radio Show. It's Jose Urquiza and Tony Reeves. Guys, thanks for coming on the show tonight. How are you? Uh, pretty good. How you doing? Not, yeah, not too bad, guys. Uh, again, certainly appreciate you making time out to do this. Probably, um, it's probably not an a unsafe bet to venture that this probably isn't typically the audience that you're uh, coming on to do interviews for, so I certainly appreciate you making the time to do it. So, guys, why don't we go ahead and just get a little brief background about yourself, and Jose, we'll start with you first since you're the front man. You know, when did you get into the music, and when did you actually start looking at getting into a band? Uh, actually, it was when I was a senior in high school. Um, and by the time I was, you know, a senior, I'd already been in about five different bands, and by that time, I just wanted something that I, you know, I could dedicate everything to. So I put out a little uh, an ad, basically looking for a guitarist, and uh, that's how I met Tony. And uh, we've basically been together for the past uh, seven years, I think. Right, Tony? Yep. Yeah, T- we've just, we've uh, we've been writing. How long, uh, Tony? Have you been playing music? Has it been pretty much all your life, or didn't you wait a little bit longer to actually get into it more passionately? No, <laughs> I've uh, I've actually, I think now I've been playing music more of my life uh, than uh, I get. I don't know how how do I word it? Uh, more than half of my life. Um, <laughs> I think I started when I was about 12, and uh, just went from there. I just uh, picked up any instrument I could and, uh, and 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 did whatever I could with it, you know, just to make it sound decent. Now, the band is uh, home-based out of Quad, Silly, Quad Cities, Illinois? Yep. And uh, for the people... About, uh, Go ahead, Jose. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's about uh, four different cities that make up the Quad Cities, two on each side of the river, you know, two in Illinois, two in Iowa, and we're, we're all from actually, you know, one city apiece, just kind of come together. All right, so growing up, Jose, I mean, certainly I would imagine every one of us here in the audience and people that listen to this on podcast after the live show have always wanted to be in a rock band. We've all had people that have kind of inspired us, whether it be singing on stage at some point, like some of us did in college. Very badly, I might add, or in the shower, or what have you. Who were your inspirations uh, growing up, and, and who really motivated you to get into the music? Tony, you want to take that? Oh, uh, for me, um, 
man, I grew up, my dad used to listen to all the old 70s stuff, you know, like Seeger and uh, Bad Company, all that, and pretty much started from there. Um, and of course, as the times go by, you know, he grew up, uh, became a teenager, got a little rebellious, started listening. I really got into the hair stuff, uh, started me really getting interested in guitar, and I pretty much listened to just about anything if it sounds good now, and and I take what I can from it, any inspiration, and, uh, you know, I just I just love music, so as long as it's uh, good to my ears, then I can deal with it. What about you, Jose? My, uh, my, uh, my background's actually completely different. You know, I'm a, this is going to sound funny, but uh, I'm a Mickey Mouse Club generation kid, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I was uh, listening to Boys to Men and Michael Jackson when I was young, so that's, that's what I grew up on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you know, I, I didn't really start getting into the rock music until I heard a band called Seven Dust. I heard their first album, and uh, I was probably about sixteen, and that totally changed my life forever. From then on, it's it's basically been bands like uh, you know Seven Dust, Breaking Benjamin, those type bands that inspire me. It's weird to go from Michael Jackson to Seven Dust. I think <laughs> it, it's definitely crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, and and I would say, you know, as somebody that is uh, fancies himself a uh, thumbnail connoisseur of uh, rock music, especially, you know, I had my uh, hardcore rap days from '88 to '92. But after I graduated high school, I got more and more into rock, especially when Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, Nirvana started right, coming right. out, getting on the scene. That's really when my love of rock kind of started to develop, and it's evolved uh, over time. I'm a big Seven Dust fan, Mudvayne, all these guys. And you guys have similar qualities, uh, what I would term a already accepted commercial quality to your sound. So when you guys get together, when you and Tony are together, I'm sorry, we're talking with Jose Arquiza and Tony Rees of the band Three Years Hollow. Hollow.com is a place to find them. Did it take you guys any type of time at all to figure out what your sound was going to be, or did you have to wait until you got most of the pieces in place until you were able to figure out what direction you wanted to go. What do you think, Jose? You know, we uh, we started off uh, completely different than we are now. You're right; it went through a lot of phases. Uh, the the the, lay, the uh the uh you know the uh, lineup we have now, as far as Three Years Hollow, actually has only been in existence for a couple of years, and that's really when our sound was defined when everybody came together. But you know, me and Tony, I would say, probably worked on, on music and honing our skills and, you know, working on my voice for probably five years before we really knew, you know, what we wanted to do musically. So when you guys released your first album, which was called Hollow, what revision of Three Years Hollow was that? And was that a, a big expense for you guys to take on right off the bat? Or was that something that you guys knew that you were going to have to do in order to start making your footprint in the world, Tony? My, how times have changed. Making an album just a few short years ago compared to today. What an evolution this world has seen in a short amount of time. I digress. Hey, go check out the rest of this episode. Head on over to the bbqcentralshow.com. Link in today's show notes. Going to take you right there. Scope this out. Just look it over. Pick something out of there. Ask me to do a show for you out of that show or any other show. That's a challenge for 2022 I want to do some requests. I got a little bit of criteria. We'll pull it together. You know, I appreciate you all very much. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less, I am your host, John Solberg. I can't wait to talk to you again soon.